Good evening everybody and welcome to our presentation on sleep. My name is Miss Doherty and together with Miss Ashmole we I, will try and take you through this presentation to give you the necessary information that's required to help support your child have better sleep patterns during this really challenging time. So hopefully by the end of this session we will have explained what sleep is, why it's important, and um, looked at the effects of sleep deprivation and poor quality sleep, have given you some suggestions on how to sleep well, how to raise the issue of sleep at home, um, and also give you a range of different relaxation techniques to help support sleep. Okay, so let's start with what exactly is sleep? So basically sleep is a sort of natural behaviour. It's part of everybody's life, um, and no matter how hard we try and fight it, we are going to want to sleep for at least part of every 24 hours. It's also very dynamic um, and when we go to sleep it's not, uh, our bodies don't just switch off um, and become wooden and lifeless. There are lots of uh, important processes occurring during this time that are vital to our emotional and physical health. Okay, so let's look at teenage sleep. So a teenager's sleep pattern is actually different from children and adults. They experience a shift in this pattern um, during adolescence, which basically means that they feel tired later um, and wake more during the night than they did as children. Um, and this is due to sort of physiological changes that are occurring during adolescence that contribute um, to this change. Now, teenagers need uh, between nine and nine and a quarter hours of sleep every night. Um, and this is different from children who needed nine to 11 hours and adults who need between seven and eight hours. Um, and ultimately less than nine hours is when you're, there could be an effect on physical and mental health. Okay, so now we'll look at the importance of sleep. Um, and firstly, we're gonna look at um, the importance of sleep and its effect on physical wellbeing. Now, when we are sleeping, our body releases a, a sort of variety of different hormones. Now, one of these is growth hormone, um, and it plays a crucial role in many different functions that occur in our body. Um, and it's essential that ultimately we sleep well so that this growth hormone can be secreted. And once it has been secreted into our body, this growth hormone um, completes a number of different functions. Um, so some of these include helps to increase height in children and adolescents, it increases muscle mass, it helps to strengthen bones, boosts the immune system, contributes to cell repair, breaks down fat and helps to develop reproductive organs. So by sleeping and letting these functions occur, we're also helping to protect our body from sort of health conditions in later life, such as obesity, diabetes and heart conditions. And I think it's important that when you are speaking to your young people about sleep, that you're conveying the importance of it, um, presenting them with facts so that they are fully aware of, of why it's so important. So we'll now focus on sleep and mental well-being. So during sleep, there are a range of different learning processes that are occurring, which is why it's so important that sleep is of a good quality. Um, and essentially your young person's not being disrupted or disturbed during their sleep. So examples of learning processes that are occurring are memory consolidation. So that's when your uh, sort of information is being moved from your short term memory to long term. Um, and this occurs during the REM phase of sleep. There's also vocabulary um, and that's retained during our deep sleep. We have pronunciation sort of learning processes occurring and auditory memories um, and that's basically the ability to remember words and sounds and that's happening um, during all of our sleep stages and sleep's really important um, for brain development during adolescence um, and we're sort of all aware that these processes are even more important as they're progressing through the school and they're learning differently and beginning to cover more complex concepts um, during each of their subjects. Sleep can also have an effect on our emotional well-being. Sleep can help us to deal with crisis um, as sleep allows us to deal with this by reducing cortisol and cortisol is basically a stress hormone in our bodies 
Um, and by reducing this cortisol, it allows our brain to process information better. It can also help us to deal with stress as we have our lowest levels of cortisol um, in our system during sleep. However, sleep deprivation can increase the levels of cortisol in our body and increased levels of cortisol have been found in the bodies of teenagers who are only having around roughly five hours sleep a night. It can also help us deal with anxiety. Um, so by allowing our body and our brain time to do all it needs to do during sleep, we can feel better physically and mentally and makes it easier to cope with and address things that are worrying us. There are a number of effects of sleep deprivation and poor quality sleep. The first one being difficulty regulating emotions. And this is because sleep deprivation affects our prefrontal cortex in our brain, which is where our emotions are rooted. And the prefrontal cortex um, basically controls our emotions, our decision making and the ability to work with other people and is one of the most sensitive to sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation can also have an impact on our learning as it sort of affects our ability to acquire information, to retain it and then how to use it. Um, and research has linked lack of sleep to lower marks achieved at school, lower attention rates and, over, and overall just a negative impact on learning. There's also been a link um, with sleep deprivation and obesity, and that's due to a lack of sleep leading to high levels of hormones that increase hunger levels and make us crave energy dense foods, things like takeaways and chocolate and crisps. OK, so over the next few slides, what we're going to do is go over some key things that can be implemented during the day, during the evening, during the last hour before bed and within the bedroom, um, that if we manage to achieve these things, it can help to support um, a good night's sleep. So the first thing that we'll cover um, is what we can do during the day in order to help us sleep well. The first thing is trying to encourage um, your child to get outside into the natural light for at least 30 minutes per day. What this does is it basically helps to produce a hormone called melatonin. And this helps our bodies to, to feel sleepy at night um, and ultimately help um, sort of regulate our sleep pattern or cycle. The second thing is trying to encourage them to avoid too many caffeine based drinks. So not just tea and coffee, but also any sort of soft drinks or any energy drinks um, should try to be avoided um, in the evening. Um, encourage ways um, to deal with stress or anxiety and this can be quite difficult but um, trying to encourage them to speak to somebody they trust so that they're not taking um, any of that to bed with them um, and also exercise can help with this um, so again it's really important to get outside even if it's just for a walk. Um, again trying to avoid having a nap during the day this is just going to interrupt their sleep pattern or their sleep cycle. Um, and not lying in at the weekend. And the sort of these last two points, I suppose, are quite difficult sometimes to manage as a parent. However, it's just reinforcing to your child that a routine um, and keeping that routine is ultimately what's going to help them um, to sleep better at night. Um, and you can also try to keep a sleep diary for a couple of weeks if you think that that would help um, your young person. Um, and sometimes patterns can be um, sort of identified if we do manage to keep a sleep diary. Next, we'll look at the things that we can do in the evening in order to sleep well. So firstly, um, encouraging our young people to have a good meal, but not too close to bed. Um, our stomach or our digestive system finds it really hard um, to deal with if we have our meal too late on um, and it's really not conducive to a good night's sleep if we do. Secondly, clearing schoolwork out of the way as soon as possible it allows them to relax more into the evening, but also means that they're not going to bed with their head racing about things that they maybe need to do or that they've just done um, and just helps that relaxation process. And also do any stimulating activities such as watching TV, playing video games and doing this earlier in the evening. Um, and part of the reason why this is is the light emitted from things like computers, televisions, our mobile phones also inhibit the release of melatonin, that sleepy hormone. 
um, and that's going to prevent them from from falling asleep later on at night. The last hour before bed is actually the most important hour in terms of sleep. Um, and so some of the things that we can be doing is firstly switching off TVs, computers and phones. Um, and I'm sure this isn't something that our young people are going to sort of easily do. Uh, we all are fully aware uh, just how much they all love their mobile phones. So even if they can't um, stop using them altogether and just encouraging them to use them less within the last hour and seeing if that works. If you have a bath, then we can be encouraging them to have a bath to wind down and chill out. But actually, um, we don't recommend showers um, as they can be more stimulating than a bath. They could be reading or listening to relaxing music, sort of anything sort of gentle and soothing um, will work. Um, Miss Ashmole is going to go over some relaxation techniques that they can potentially use to help them drift off to sleep. Um, and again, just reiterating to them to try and stick as closely to the same bedtime and getting up times, even at the weekends, as this will all sort of tie into having a really good sleep pattern. So there are some things that we can do um, within the bedroom environment to try and help our young people to sleep well. So the first thing is to try and keep the bedroom dark and cool. Make sure that the bed's comfortable and that they've got sort of suitable pillows. Using subdued lighting, so instead of using the ceiling light, trying to use side lamps. Removing or packing away um, electronic gadgets, so phones, games consoles, all of that, those things. Removing pets from the bedroom, and by that I really mean more nocturnal um, pets or nocturnal animals. Uh, it's just when your child's going to sleep that animals potentially is about to get more active and could disrupt your child's sleep. Um, and we also avoid uh, or recommend avoiding using a very loud alarm. So it's much better for them to be um, sort of woken up with a more gentler sound or even a, a light source if possible. So we appreciate that raising the issue of sleep at home um, can be quite challenging, especially during the sort of circumstances that we find ourselves in just now uh, and the number of our young people that or whose sleep patterns are, have been disrupted. So there's sort of a, a few key things here. So firstly, ensure you've got information um, to hand. So using the information from today's presentation to inform teenagers or your children about the importance of sleep, the consequences of not getting enough sleep and giving them strategy, strategies on how they can improve sleep. And by hopefully giving this sort of factual accurate information, this allows them to make informed decisions. It's also important to listen to what they have to say and trying to see the issue from their point of view. Um, a lot of them are now sort of stuck in this routine um, and it's really difficult for them to try and get out of it. So by listening and then discussing the issues, it's going to help to sort of put in place a strategy to help them make changes to their sleep that are both manageable and achievable. And there's potentially going to have to be some negotiation there as well. Um, and th the changes are only really going to occur if the young person's willing to make the changes. So be prepared to sort of meet in the middle and be flexible. And remember, small changes are better than no change. So here is our sleep well checklist. Firstly, as I said um, a number of times throughout the presentation, one of the most important things that uh, a teenager or a child can do is to set a regular bedtime and stick to it as closely as possible every day. Trying to exercise regularly throughout the day. Um, and getting outside for at least 30 minutes a day. Trying not to nap, especially after 3 p.m. Complete homework early in the evening. Avoid stimulants such as tea, coffee, energy juice and chocolate. Keep lights low in the evening. Try to keep the bedroom dark and cool at night and keep the bedroom tidy and trying to change bed linen regularly. It can also be helpful to plan something relaxing before bedtime. Avoid watching anything scary or exciting before bed. Avoid using the phone, texting, playing games or watching TV in the hour before bed. 
trying as hard as it uh, as you can to not clock watch in bed. If you're struggling to sleep, try a relaxation technique and play something soft and relaxing in the background if sound needs to be on. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Ashmole and I hope you've now managed to gain a better understanding of what sleep is and why it's important. In the next few slides, I will talk about some relaxation techniques that will help support sleep. These exercises can be used as part of the daily nighttime routine or when you or your child is struggling to relax the body and mind before bed. There is a variety of different practices though, so make sure you can find one that suits you or your child best. It is important to make sure you keep using these techniques, even if you don't feel better straight away. It does take time and regular practice before you start to feel the benefits. The relaxation techniques I'm going to talk you through today is deep breathing exercises, progressive muscle relaxation, guided imagery and mindfulness. The first relaxation technique I'm going to talk to you about is a deep breathing exercise called 478 technique. This breathing pattern was developed by Dr. Andrew Weil to help people gain control over their breathing and help people fall asleep in a shorter period of time. Breathing exercises are designed to bring the body into a state of deep relaxation. Specific patterns that involve holding the breath for a period of time allow your body to replenish its oxygen. This technique is particularly useful for individuals who feel stressed, anxious and worried. The 478 technique forces the mind and body to focus on regulating the breath rather than replaying your worries. To complete the practice effectively, ensure you are sitting or lying in a comfortable position with your eyes closed. First, relax your mouth and exhale completely. Next, close your lips, inhaling silently through the nose as you count to four in your head. Then, for seven seconds, hold your breath. And lastly, exhale through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle for eight seconds. You should practice this pattern for a full four breaths. The second relaxation technique I will talk you through is called progressive muscle relaxation. This technique involves alternating tension and relaxation in all of the body's major muscle groups relieving your body from the day's activities. If you suffer from anxiety or stress, your muscles might already be quite tense. By practicing progressive muscle relaxation, you will learn how a relaxed muscle feels different from a tensed muscle. Practicing this technique will give you a greater sense of control over your body's anxiety response. Before you begin, make sure you set aside 15 minutes to complete these exercises. Ensure you choose a space and a position that is comfortable, such as sitting on a chair or lying on your bed. Start at stage one and work your way through one to 10 on the picture to the left. Remember and make sure to hold each muscle tension for five seconds, pause for 10 seconds and breathe deeply in between each muscle tension. The third relaxation technique that might help you de-stress and fall asleep more easily is guided imagery. This technique can quickly calm your body and simultaneously relax your mind. It can help you de-stress in minutes and is a really useful strategy to use as part of your bedtime routine. This strategy is slightly different from the other techniques as it relies on the use of all your senses. Your goal is to immerse yourself fully in the scene. This includes what you can see, taste, touch and smell, as well as how you feel. The more details you can include in your imagery, the more effective this technique will be. Keep in mind that when you first begin to use imagery, it might feel strange and you may have difficulty immersing yourself fully in your imagined scene. But with practice, this will get easier and your imagination will get stronger and you'll be able to enter a relaxed state more quickly. To start the process, find a quiet place and get comfortable. Ensure you close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths in from your belly. You want to vividly imagine your scene. 
So you want to remember a time and place where you felt wonderful and relaxed, a happy place in your memory. Then immerse yourself in the sensory details and relax. The last relaxation technique that helps promote good quality sleep is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a type of meditation in which you focus on being intensely aware of what you're sensing and feeling in the moment without judgment. Mindfulness helps direct your attention away from negative thinking and allows relaxation of the body and mind. There is hundreds of different mindfulness techniques, including the five senses exercise, mindfulness thinking, body scan meditation, mindfulness seeing, listening or breathing. There is not a particular style that is best or most effective as that will depend on individual preference and finding out which type works best for you. The mindfulness practice I've chosen is the body scan meditation as this style is particularly useful to help relieve sleep issues and improve quality of sleep. You can think of a body scan as a mental x-ray that slowly travels across your body. It involves paying attention to parts of the body in a gradual sequence from feet to head. Doing a body scan is meant to be simple and I've listed a step-by-step -step instruction to get you started. If you prefer, I have also included links to a guided mindfulness body scan on the next slide. This is a very short YouTube clip to give you a rough guide of what is included in a body scan. Remember though, this practice should take much longer and last a minimum of 10 minutes. I have made some suggestions on the next slide of useful links for guided relaxation techniques. Again, this is all about personal preference depending on the speaker's style and sound of their voice. Make sure you try all different ones to find the one that suits you best. So just lying down, we're going to focus the attention on the different parts of the body, watching as they switch off for the night, starting down at the feet, muscles in the toes and the arches switching off, the legs, any tension just dissolving as the calves and thighs power down, the muscles in the lower back and the stomach switching off. Now the chest and upper back switching off. The shoulders, the arms, the hands and fingers just switching off. The face, the eyes, the mouth. Any tension just melting away as the muscles switch off, shut down, at rest, for the night. These five YouTube links are videos that you might find beneficial to use when trying to relax before bed. There are thousands of other YouTube videos and also audiobooks or podcasts that you might prefer. Make sure that you take time to search and find one that you like. I've put together this poster of suggested apps. All of these are free to download but some have in-app purchases. I use the Sleep Cycle app every night to track my sleep patterns as this really allows me to wake up in the lightest sleep phase. I also use rain sounds if I'm finding it particularly difficult to get to sleep. Although it is advised to reduce your screen time before bed, some apps do help you relax and fall asleep easier. Just make sure that you face the screen away and just listen to the content. If you have a smartphone, you can scan the QR codes with your camera and it will take you directly to the download page. As Ms Doherty previously mentioned, it might be a good idea for your child to keep a sleep diary. This means they can track how they slept and the possible reasons why that happened. I've listed 12 questions that will help form the basis of a sleep diary. 